What's up, internet? Kakabili mo lang ng bagong computer, or you bought yourself new RAM sticks. And since you watch Hardware Sugar, you're familiar with the term RAM overclocking. Paminsan na babanggit namin. Pero worth it ba talaga i overclock yung RAM mo? Is it worth your time? And we're gonna find out in this video. Pero bago nun, yung hindi talaga sayang sa panahon mo ay yung Windows 10 CD keys ng sponsor natin. Ang video na to ay handog ni CDKoffers.com. Marami kang mahahanap na iba't ibang uri ng software dito. May games, apps, activation codes for Windows 10. Check out our video on CDK Offers in the video description. Mabilis, mura, and syempre legit dito. Madali lang mag-order, search for the software you need, add to cart, check out, daan ka sa payment options nila, wala pa isang minuto, finished. May legit working CDK ka na sa software na pinili mo. Gamitin ang aming promo code para makakuha pa ng extra 20% discount sa purchase mo. Kung naghanap ka ng mura, legit, and original software, check out cdkoffers.com. So, in dito video on how to overclock RAM. Marami ng ibang channels na may videos na ganun. Pero dito, iba benchmark talaga natin. We're going to test gaming, tsaka productivity, and... Dun sa unoverclocked RAM versus yung overclocked RAM, may performance difference ba talaga? By default, kung DDR4 yung RAM mo, yung stock na speed nun is either 2133 or 2400 MHz. If you want to get speeds past that, you need to overclock. And there are two basic ways to overclock your RAM. Number one is to enable the XMP profile in your BIOS. Yung XMP profile, parang ano yan, ready to wear yan. Um, it, or it's a... It's a pre-save configuration for certain types of RAM. So all of the configurations you need for the RAM are already encoded in that XMP profile. Lahat ng frequencies, timing, voltage, cast latency, lahat yun nakaset na. Yung XMP profile, parang kailangan mo nung damit and so pupunta ka lang sa department store. Tapos yan, ang dami nang ready to wear. Pili ka lang ng t-shirt. Pili ka lang ng pantalon, pili ka lang ng sapatos. You just pick what's available and it should fit you. Or to go back to RAM, yung pinipili mong XMP profile, usually okay na yun sa RAM mo. Gagana na siya. Because XMP profiles are meant to be a bit generic. They don't really push things to the limit. They're safer in regards to their timing so that they're more compatible with a variety of RAM. The second way to overclock RAM is mabusisi. I mean, talagang... Instead of preloading selected profiles na nandun na nga lahat, frequency, cast latency, timings, voltage, ikaw magsiset nun manually nung lahat. And one little change in one little number can screw up everything. Maswerte ka kung unstable computer mo, paminsan ayaw talaga niya magboot. And even when it boots, you need to keep running mem test to ensure that stable nga yung manual configuration mo na yon. So kung yung XMP parang ready to wear na damit, yung manual setting of values is parang tailored. You, you really need to measure and check and make sure na okay, susukat mo talaga kumbaga na sakto yung mga timings na linalagay mo, sakto yung frequency, sakto lahat ng settings na input mo sa RAM. So this is very time consuming and most people just stick to XMP. But if you have a lot of time or you know, trip mo lang talaga to monkey around with your computer, then usually mas mabilis yung speeds na nakuha mo kung manually mo talaga ino overclock yung RAM. Just like yung tailored na damit, mas maganda yung bagsak sa yo, mas maganda yung sukat sa yo, mas maganda rin yung performance nung manually overclock RAM. Assuming na <laughs> magaling ka mag-overclock and yun nga na nakuha mo talaga yung kiliti ng RAM mo, yung mga specific settings na maganda sa kanya. So for today's test, we're using two 8GB sticks of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro na yung rated speed nila is 3200 MHz. Tapos yung ibang components, Ryzen 3600 XT, ASRock B550M MOBO, 5700 XT for the GPU, Tapos 1 terabyte na NVMe na galing sa team group. So yung pag-overclock namin dito sa RAM, <laughs> uh, manually, it's very close to the SMP settings. May konti kaming binago dun sa timings. So 3200 MHz pa rin yung RAM speed at 1.38 volts. Tapos for gaming, yung testing namin, todo settings. Max all settings at 1080p para, you know, we can discount bottlenecking at the GPU. 
So yung unang game sa benchmarking natin is yung Mafia Remake. Dun sa stock speed ng 2133 MHz, you're getting around the average of 78 FPS. Tapos yan yung mga scenes na may action, you know, gunfight scenes. You were getting, of course, um, higher frames per second in less demanding scenes such as night driving. We were getting around 86 FPS for that. Nung nag-overclock tayo, we saw an increase of around 10 to 14 frames per second. So we're now averaging between 86 and 122 frames per second. So definite improvement. See, Far Cry 5 is one of those state-of-the-art games that will really bring most systems to its limit. Sobrang ganda ng graphics. Ganda ng lighting, god rays, soft shadows, vistas, gun models. Tapos ang ganda ng view from a distance, kung baga may kita mo talaga what's on the horizon. On the default non-OC RAM speed, we were getting around 93 frames per second. When we overclock, we were getting 118 frames per second. So basically, that's plus 25 FPS, which is very, very noticeable. Malaking, you know, big change yun. Next game, another oldie but still very much a goodie, is Switcher 3. On stock RAM speeds, you're getting around 100 FPS and. And when you overclock, we were getting around 109 frames per second. Yung medyo napansin namin sa Witcher 3, ang laki nung variance between scenes with action versus scenes where you're just walking around or sumasakay ka kay Roach. Like, dun sa light scenes, we could get around 109 FPS, pero with action-oriented scenes or with a lot of things going on in the background, daming mga NPCs or daming mga animations, uh, if you're casting a spell or something with a lot of enemies around you, then it'll bog down to around 88, 89 FPS. And so generally, kasi ang smooth nung light scenes and then pagpasok ng mga kalaban, nagsislow down talaga siya. There is a general sense of sluggishness to the game when more is being demanded of it graphically. And you could tell that overclocking the RAM helped a little bit with that. It felt less sluggish on the OC settings. Yung last na sinubukan natin is Valorant, which is an esports title. And since it's an FPS, every frame per second matters or it gives you a competitive advantage. The smoother your game is, the more FPS you get. It, it helps you acquire targets better. And so on stock RAM speeds, you're getting around 173 FPS on average. And Healers down. And when we overclocked it, we were getting 228 frames per second. Ah! 
So an laki ng difference between non-overclock versus overclock performance. That's basically like an a plus 40 FPS increase after overclocking. Tapos napansin nga nung tester namin na parang mas madali na nga mag-snipe <laughs> nung with the faster FPS with the overclock RAM. Because yun nga, in general, a smoother screen will help you in fast-paced games like FPS, like Valorant. gaming, kita talaga across the board na worth it yung overclocking. We saw performance gains in all the games we tested. Sometimes it was around a 10 FPS increase, but like in Valorant for instance, it was around a plus 40 FPS increase, which is really insane. I mean, that's a that's a major step up just from overclocking your RAM settings. Punta naman tayo sa productivity, and we tried to use benchmarking as well as real live tests of uh, certain productivity programs to get a general sense if yun nga, worth it ba mag overclock ng RAM for usual work programs. We started our tests with Web Expert 3. This is a browsing benchmark, but it does emulate real world applications like applying photo filters, file management, data protection, basically things that you usually do online. On stock speeds, we got a score of 256. On the overclock settings, we got a score of 250. So, <laughs> hindi siya tumaas, hindi siya level lang. Bumaba pa siya konte dun sa under overclock settings. Next, we did a 40 second 4K render video on DaVinci Resolve, which is a editing software similar to Adobe Premiere. Yung nakuha natin under stock is 1 minute and 3 seconds to render that file. and 59 seconds on overclocking. So, a small benefit, at least tumaas naman dito, hindi siya bumaba. There was a slight benefit to using overclock RAM for DaVinci Resolve. For our third productivity test, we ran how long it took to compile the code for our site, hardwaresugar.ph or hwsugar.ph. And on non-overclock RAM, it took 11.4 seconds to compile. With overclock, it only took 10.5 seconds. So again, a small but noticeable improvement for this productivity app. We also did another video test, this time with the Blackmagic Benchmark. This simulates working with 8K videos. So these are really large, sobrang laki ng mga video files na to. And it counts the FPS we can expect when we preview it in DaVinci Resolve. On stock, we get 26 FPS and on overclock RAM, we get an increase to 28. <laughs> So, bale, 2 frames per second lang yung difference. O nga, may improvement, pero sobrang liit lang between the non-OC RAM and the overclocked RAM. So far, hindi ganun ka-exciting yung results natin for productivity apps with overclocked RAM versus the default speeds. But we wanted to run one final test for productivity, and that was WinRAR. So, we compressed files with a total of 12.8 gigabytes, and with non-OC RAM, it took 15. It took 9 minutes 54 seconds. With overclock RAM, it took 8 minutes 21 seconds. So at least dito sa WinRAR, kitang kita yung advantage ng overclock RAM. The overclock RAM finished the task 1 minute and 33 seconds faster compared to sa non overclock. That's an increase in performance of 15%, or you know, it took 15% less time to complete the task. So, so at least if you're looking at dealing with compressing large files, then overclock RAM would be important to you. So to summarize, worth it ba you mag overclock ng RAM? For gaming, there's a definite advantage. We saw performance gains in all of the games we tested, ranging from 10 to 40 FPS. So yes, faster RAM is important in games and you really do feel it in certain titles such as Valorant. For work-related programs, however, it was hard to see a noticeable difference. Of course, applications like Blender, AutoCAD, data science apps, then faster RAM is preferred. We did see improvements in compression with the final test with WinRAR. But in general, especially for everyday apps and programs, then overclock RAM really won't make much of a difference to the user. So bottom line, if you're a gamer, then yes, uh, overclock your RAM. Assuming, of course, na kaya ng monitor mo, there's no reason to push your frames per second past 60 if your monitor can't handle it. 
Kasi kahit kaya ng computer mo mag-push nung 120 frames per second, 140, 180, kung yung pinaka mabilis na refresh rate ng computer mo is only 60 fps or rather 60 hertz, then you won't see, you literally won't see those faster frames on screen. Um, but if you do have the hardware to take advantage of the faster frames, then yes, overclocked RAM for gaming is a distinct advantage. But what kind of overclocking should you do? Just based on the XMP or gusto mo talaga mag-configure manually? And in general, the SMP settings are fine. It really takes a lot of time and effort to nail down the specific settings, frequency, timing, cast latency, numbers that you need for a particular RAM. There are some people na ganado don, sobrang na excite na. Okay, I'm gonna sit down and spend 12 hours just trying to trial and error yun basically. <laughs> Palitan mo yung isang setting, boot up mo, tinamo kung gumagana, tinamo kung stable, then repeat for the other settings. And so that's very, very repetitive. Again, there are some people that like that. But if you're not like that, then the XMP profile is fine. You'll get most of the performance gains that you can possibly get from your RAM just with the XMP profile overclock. Mas lalo pa to for productivity apps. Since as we saw, hindi naman ganun kalaki yung performance increase, then just stick with the XMP profile. There's really no need to manually overclock your RAM if you're just usually running basic or standard work programs. If you're looking for a speed boost for those things, we do have a previous video about that. And basically, yung recommendations namin is to, is to, let's say, buy an SSD or buy more RAM, meaning a larger capacity RAM, instead of fiddling around with the speeds of your current RAM. So definitely overclock your RAM using XMP settings. Beyond that, you'll see a noticeable difference in your gaming. Maybe a slight performance increase in your productivity apps. And beyond that, there's really no need to monkey around manually with the RAM settings. Unless yun nga, yan yung trip mo. 